Yo. Hello. Good morning. Can you tell me in the chat if you can hear me well? Also, let me stop the music. Goodbye, music. Thank you so much. What's up, guys? I hope you're doing well. Just made some tea. I got my hydrator. Staying hydrated is very important. I hope the stream quality is good because today there is a snowstorm, not storm, but like snow stuff and the upload speed. So if you can hear me well, please let me know. Today, uh, I wanted to share with you the process. So I'm reworking one of my, uh, our old projects. This is the old one and light be here is baked by the way. And this is the new one, so I will share with you the process, answer your questions. And to answer your questions, I think we're going to start also with something. One of the questions I think that are interesting on our Discord community. You see what I'm doing here? I'm, uh, for those who are not here in the Discord community, join us. So, my man. Creativo is trying to create studio lighting setup. I think we can, I'm going to show you quickly how we can, one of the ways we can create studio lighting setup. So he asked me if I have a tutorial on that. We can cover that quickly, then jump to my project. Parish, Adam, good morning, my guys. How are you? I hope all is good. All right. Let me turn off the heating, it's kind of hot. It's always exciting to be here. So for the studio setup, I'm going to create a new folder and let's just call it studio. And inside, and inside this folder, I'm going to make a map, also call it studio. But I also make a folder, call it maps. Link to Discord in the chat, sorry, in the description, always. And let's save selected. And let me check if the computer, I'm using my laptop, if it's on the highest speed. Let me check OBS. Yeah, full speed mode. I need to hear them fans though. Yeah, now we're talking. Okay. I will go to the modeling mode. Oh, wow. Yeah, the fans now are working. Let me just do this so I won't hear the fans. Yo, Malik, Malik Malki, good morning or evening. Where are you guys watching from? Can you tell me? Victor, good morning, buddy. FZA, good morning. It's good to see you guys. Yeah, I think I know what's up. Hey, Nildo, Isa, hello, hello. Okay, there seemed to be massive delay. I don't know how many minutes, so... Pardon me. Yeah, see, I like this. 23 concurrent viewers, 22 likes. If you didn't leave a like yet, leave a like. It costs you nothing. It helps us reach more people. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> FZA. Sun is shining here. Yeah, I uh, simulated the sun in my Unreal Engine to enjoy it today with the cup of tea. So... I had a beautiful morning though, let me show you FZA. There is nothing can stop me every morning from going to get my cup of coffee. So this morning I was like drinking my coffee on this view. I love it. No sun, no problem. Sa Saula, hey buddy. 
Saula, this is the first time I see you here. Welcome. Sa Salta, Salta, Thank you, man. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So while the old project is compiling shaders, let's create studio setup real quick or see uh, see how it's done. And also once we create the basic stuff, so let's go create the basic stuff. I'm gonna also set a timer to focus. Yo, viral, viral. Yeah, welcome buddy. Nice. So many familiar faces here. I love it. Peter, good morning, Peter. Rhino, yo guys, welcome, welcome. I'm gonna create a rectangle, rectangle, this will uh, be the floor. So I'm gonna make it 750 by 750 units. Click somewhere, click complete. And center it. Studio setup is really straightforward, really easy. You have most control over our lights so i'm gonna make a box and this box let's keep it 100 by 100 oh, i didn't create it did i let's put it also on zero zero click complete click f and yeah that should be fine let's create some lights so when we create lights for the studio I like to use rectangular lights. So here is one. Let's also create post-process volume. So we can disable the, len the lens flare. If we type here, visual effects, here's post-process volume. Let's type here lens. Let's set the intensity to zero and let's type infinite so we can just make this an infinite. Hey, Dinjar Aiden, very nice to see you too, buddy. Welcome. Anil Yadav, yo, from India. Oh, yeah, I love it. So, guys, where are you watching from? Tell us. Currently, I'm in Istanbul. You can tell from the T. Salt, salt me. Is it possible to export 100k poly architecture scene from 3ds Max to EE4 to EE5 and work smoothly? Yes, it's, it's possible. Let me show you this project here. I think we have, if we type scene stats, I forgot where is it. In this uh, project here, we have a couple of million of polygons. It's, um, I don't think it's um, like the number of polys is one of the factors that we should count in. It's, of course, it's important. We should not go like 500 billion million uh, polygons. So, of course, it is possible to export 100k uh, poly architectural scene to the engine and work smoothly with it. There is the there is so many there are so many things that we need to take into consideration like the number of assets we have the number of material IDs we have the and so on I hope this helps so from Libya from Kenya from Spain from Mozambique Marwan Sabah Al Khair Good morning I'm good Thank you so much How how about you Let's bring a mesh. So here's a tip. If you want to find something real fast in your content browser, you can type here on the asset filter and then select what you're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for a static mesh that would, yeah, I think this looks better than, or this. Hmm. Yeah, let's keep this, it would be fine. So here we have two lights. And one of the best ways to create your light, your studio setup is going to Google. So let's go to Google. And here you can type studio setup. And let's type, or let's not forget to type lighting. 
and just like in real life we need to place our lights so we have soft boxes we have spotlights we have all sorts of lights that you can simulate and because with lumen gi it just works there is it's uh how can i say it's more intuitive than like unreal engine 4 when we need to bake the light every single time what i mean here is if we have a mesh like this and let me get rid of one of these lights you see how the light is bouncing off the surface and if we choose to color the surface with anything let's not forget to turn off our let's type here plastic Where do we have some colors? This is green. It will just fill fill our scene with green. You know, and just like in real life, like just like these guys, when we have a softbox or something, what you need to do is to open Google, find a studio setup that you like. Where is Google? Again. Oh, there we go. Have your subject and experiment with lights. That's how it is. Also, let's not forget to set up a camera. So let's say this is a nice angle. Select this camera. And let's set the lens to 58. Something like so. And let's not forget to set the focus settings. So if we show the debug, the, the plane, focus plane, we can pick an asset so we can focus on it. And if you click here, wait, we have in the layouts can have some a setup like this so now we can select our camera on this layout so yeah let's say we are happy like this we can now select our lights and move them around and my favorite thing about this is you can just have fun experiment with lighting and all. I think green is not the best option. So duplicate this, assign it here, and let's change the color. Or we can rotate the light and like direct it directly to at our match. You can tell how soft it is. And this is something I really love about Lumen. And you can move a light, put it on the top like so. And you can see the highlights. So yeah, I would say for uh, studio lighting, I hope Kriatovo, you will find this useful when you see it. Um, the thing here, I think there is so, too much skylight. It's up to you if you want to have a skylight. Of course, you can use also if you want to save yourself some time. Here's a tip. You can type studio lighting HDRI image. And you can download some of these pictures. So I think we have HDRI Haven. Let's see, HDRI Haven. If we go to studio, can download some of these pictures or some of these HDRIs. And if you like, you can bring in a light HDRI backdrop, like so. So if you're doing product visualization and whatnot, you can select this HDRI, import an HDRI in the engine, 
and experiment with lighting. And because it's just lumen, it's lumen, it just works. Which is beautiful. And we can get rid of these lights if you like. Yeah. I think this is very cool to show off your assets, your products, your visualizations. Take nice screenshots. Okay, let me read the chat. Malik, to be honest, I'm new to Unreal and I liked your videos, so I had free mornings so I'm here out of curiosity. Malik, welcome. Thank you so much. All right, Peter. So we have multiple people. India, Holland, Scotland, Turkey, Poland again. Nice. All right, Danger. Hey, bro, may I ask a question? Of course, anyone. Feel free to ask questions. If you do not have an RTX card, is it possible to use Lumen? Yes, sir. It is possible to use Lumen with your GTX cards. And I believe... Let me see if I have one of my tutorials in uh, on my GTX card. So I had the GTX card for many, many, many years. And... The thing about Lumen is designed for next generation consoles, like, um, and it's here to solve the problems of ray tracing. So, like, ray tracing is so expensive on, uh, in terms of you need an RTX card to be able to use ray tracing, but Lumen is here to solve that. So, if you don't have an RTX card, you can work with Lumen. Yes, of course, the better GPU you have, the more frames per second you will get. But you don't need an RTX card to be able to create awesome stuff, especially with Lumen. This is a very interesting question that I keep seeing. I think we should make a little video on that. PSA. And let me take open the notepad. Adam, so it just happened that I have make neighborhoods of single family houses. Do you have any tips on how to set up the surroundings and how to do it quickly? Yes, I can share something. So let's go back first, change this map. Let's go back to the Berlin project. And let's then save here. Oh, what happened? So, Adam. Let me share with you one of our old projects on how we do stuff. This is a project we did a couple of years ago. And I always keep surrounding buildings in a color like gray or white so we can like focus on the main project. I don't really recommend. It depends on the project, of course. But that's how I would first, if you're making any surroundings, keep them low poly as you can see here, and keep them in, in one color, for example. And the city here, like some of these buildings we modeled from pictures, quickly using 3ds Max and Blender, like really basic modeling. And the rest of the buildings in this area, there are many solutions, but the solution we used, uh, there, were, there was this plugin for Blender. Let me remember the name of it. I think it's called Open OSM or let's type on Google OSM Blender. Yeah. So there is this plugin. If you type on Google OSM Blender, it's free. You go to the Gumroad page. There is a paid version of it that's like have more features. And there is the free version. And by using the free version, there is here, I think, the installation structures, the documentation. Uh, if the area you are working with have like any data, you can grab that data to Blender, clean it up, and then export it to Unreal. And if I want to show you an example of what this data looks, looks like, did the engine crash? Of course. You see these buildings? So all these buildings and all these streets are actually 
we got them from using uh, Blender OSM, that uh, the plugin I just showed. And I think we can cover it in an upcoming stream or upcoming video, Adam. But that would be a first step if you want like really easy solution and really fast Blender OSM. And these buildings, like the only thing I would clean them up is just uh, wield some vertices, close some open splines, and depends if you're baking the light or not. Basically, that's it. So that's how I would do things. And if you want to spice things up, so near your project, so let's say this is our project. So these are uh, buildings with the texture. Let me show you how we did these. So we had a photographer who took pictures of buildings in the surrounding area and we used like Photoshop and like extreme basic modeling skills to, to recreate these, <laughs> just like GTA 2. <laughs> but they work because from distance, we don't have to, to care about the details, right? They just work and it feels like home if you were in Berlin. And for other buildings, we used Google Earth and Google Earth VR to take a look at the surrounding area and also just basic modeling. And yeah, so that's two or three options. I hope this helps, uh, Adam. So I would start with Blender OSM and Google Earth, it will help like seeing the area surrounding your project. And the end result could look like, could look like something like this. Okay. Yo, Saltazme, welcome from Poland. Nice. Below, my man. Wonderful job, bro. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you too, buddy. All those wonderful tutorials, lives. My pleasure, man. So you have 16 inch M1 max maxed out, but you have so many problems. Nothing works correctly. You try Unreal Engine 5 in preview and twin motion and crashes. So to be honest, I almost never used Mac devices and I know it works. I know Unreal Engine Twin Motion works on Mac, but I'm not sure if it's graphical uh, GPUs capabilities, and that's why I recommend using Windows. Um, so if that's possible in any way, I mean, for Unreal Engine Five preview, like expect crashes. The engine just crashed on us. Did it open? Ah, oh, there we go. Let's keep restore. So for twin motion, I think it's much more stable, but I know it's not easier said than done. Like, hey, use Windows. <laughs> so I really can't help here. Uh, Mac, Windows, the hardware stuff. If it's a problem that is related to lighting and whatnot, maybe we can help brother. However, however, I wish I could say like, hey, just uh, Windows. But you can join us. Uh, there are many reasons also that things crash. Join us on Discord. Try to replicate the crashes. Sometimes it can be a mesh that's crashing your engine. Depends. Okay. Akin, I couldn't see fillet in modeling tools. We can do L, plane, and fillet. I don't know. I don't think we have fillet in the modeling tools unless we have a new update, but I don't think it's there yet. We can do subdivision, but not fillet. But uh, the guy to contact and to ask, so what was, let me check, remember. If anyone wants any, or if you have any feedback on the modeling tools, 
let me check Ryan yeah Ryan this is the guy who is developing the modeling tools for uh, Unreal and if you have any requests or you have any feedback I would tweet at Ryan okay and he is also sharing some of the things like there are some very cool things he is doing uh, and some new tools in engine so he shares also short videos and like how to do cool things there is this new geometry script thingy where we can let's check this is actually new i didn't see this one before let's see We have booleans and operations. I think the modeling tools are becoming cooler and cooler. So, Akin and everyone, all improvements go at Ryan. <laughs> Dimitri, I'm great, thank you, buddy. How are you? Okay. Parish question: How do you how to put two-sided materials on one wall? It's outside or inside. Even though I don't recommend enabling two-sided material, it will just um, cost more on the performance. Like um, I would use that strategically. However, if you have to, so let's say we have a mesh like this. right and it has only one side which is this side and we need the other side too when we create a material so let's quickly come here and let's make folder call it mats for now let's make a material actually let's call it also basic and let's make a material instance while we're at it. While, while we're at it. I'm gonna just add a vector parameter, call it color. Save. If you go to the material details here, we have under the material, material domain and so on, we have two sided. So let's just make color. Actually, let's just keep it. So let's assign this material. We didn't assign that two-sided option yet, Parish. And as you can see, like it's just behaving normally. However, if you enable this two-sided on the material itself, then click save. You can see now that it is two-sided. So that is the answer to your question. I hope it helps. And this, of course, if you have a light, like so, I enable um, this option sometimes if I'm doing like quick fix because of the lights. So now the light's like hitting the surface and reflecting back on it. But if we don't have this or if we, like if you have one face from the other side, like we have now. Ha, huh. now that's interesting. Okay, before this light used to go through the object. So actually that's interesting. So this is one of the hidden updates. One way we can tell if we add a directional light, perhaps. How? Directional lights? It's uh, interesting. So yeah, they don't pass through now. So that's cool. Because in the older versions of UE5 and UE4, if you have a light like this and you have a, a mesh like this, it used to go through. And this is very nice quality of life update. I need to check. This is nice. 
It's reflecting back now. Good question, Parish. All right. So why does the sunlight produce me jagged, gathered sh shadows? Let's see. So depending on the scene you have, but so let's delete our lighting. So that's uh, Victor Gracia. I think the best way to spend these live streams is answering your questions, guys. <laughs> I like that. Don't get me wrong. So I, I deleted my, uh, by the way, before I show you what I deleted. This is a sun and sky, uh, sun, what was the name of this actor? Sun and sky actor. Okay. And this actor, or we can enable it if you type here sun position calculator. Usually it's enabled by default for AEC projects. And the reason I'm using this in such a project like we have here now is because I am getting the latitude and longitude of Berlin. So when we add this actor, it is these are the components that have like directional light, skylight and all. And we have latitude, longitude, time zone, the date, the month, the time of the day. So now it is literally 10 a.m. in uh, that's where the sun is when it's 10 a.m. Right. So let's get rid of this for now. Actually, let's click Control X and let's put it in another map just to keep it saved somewhere. And let's see what options we have on our directional light. So I'm going to make a new level, call it sun or light lighting. I'm going to paste this one here. And I'm going back to my project. All right. And I'm going to open the window. Environment light mixer. Create the skylight, the atmospheric light, and the sky atmosphere. Press Ctrl L to move it. So let's see if we can produce gadget shadows. If we unlock from sidebar and unlock the details panel as well, let's select our sun, let's type directional. And let's see what settings we can mess with. Because I never missed. So these are not for lumen. Right? These are for the normal good old um, dynamic lighting. In that's not the that best way. Name. What do we call it? So this won't work. Uh Victor. What type of shadows exactly? Uh gadget shadows. If you are, and what engine, because now we have UE4 and UE5. However, if you are using Lumen, let's say, we have made this tutorial a couple of weeks ago. So let me see if even the console commands are still working. So in the channel, if you go to the channel, there is Unreal Engine 5 Lumen lighting for Archviz. I have a couple of console commands in this tutorial and in this tutorial. Let me see if we can control some of its... Uh... So these are the cascaded. They won't work with Lumen, obviously, so don't even try. Distance field shadows. No. Let's see. So we have... What settings change in here as well? We have the light. We have the angle. If you want to get these smooth shadows can increase the size of the, sky, the sun. So that's nice. We see that immediately. We have the source soft. Let's bring these to the default settings. Cast shadows, indirect lighting, intensity, light color, and advanced settings. This gets confusing for me and for beginners. 
because some settings would affect lighting when lumen is not working, like the cascaded lighting, let's call it. And some settings are only for lumen, whatnot. Or after you bake the light, but user interface could use some love. None of these would work here, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's check some of these console commands. Lumen Unreal Engine 5 documentation. I'm looking for the documentation. Lumen with material bent normals. We also have the word settings, project settings. Let's go to rendering and let's go to the virtual shadow maps. Reflections, Lumen and Lumen using hardware ray tracing when available. Virtual shadow maps. Victor, one of the settings you may need to look at are the virtual shadow maps. And I'm trying to see if I can re achieve that. Okay, Victor, it might be also better if you join the community. Or if you are already in the community and share your questions on the like on the exact problems in the question section and tag the an unreal helper it would be easier to debug that exact problem of uh, struggling with however i will copy this question also and put it on my notes And R dot shadow. I'm reading from the resolution LOD bias. So this console command R dot shadow virtual resolution LOD bias directional or local directional works on the direction light and local works on the rectangular light point light spotlight and uh, so on so if we set this to a value like two anything will happen in this case and also let's uh, select the skylight first and let's set it to real-time capture so we can get rid of these black shadows. Let's select the direction light again. Where can we see? Victor. A screenshot of the problem you're struggling with would make it easier because I'm trying to make jagged shadows here. It's not the engine wants to work with no problems in my end. Ahmad, is this HDRI library already installed? If you were talking about the HDRI bucket drop, if you go to plugins and type here HDRI, this is a plugin you enable here and when you enable it I don't think there is a library installed 
When we enable that HDRI backdrop though, and we go to lights, you can see here HDRI backdrop, and the same for the sun position calculator. If you click and drag the HDRI backdrop like so, of course you can make it larger. You can have a lovely sky if you want to replace the sky with the with the sky like this. And if you want free HDRIs, you have HDRI Haven. You have more than 500 HDRIs for free that you can download, import in the engine. Then when you download these HDRIs, you can replace them here at the cube map. And I think by default, the engine comes with a couple of HDRIs. And you can show these HDRIs if you click on bring in the content browser, then go to settings and show the engine content. If you show the engine content, you will have more HDRIs to choose from, as you can see here. So all these comes with the engine. And click one, it will compile. Good old days. Muhammad, Kuvet, hey buddy, Booty Booty from Turkey, welcome. Hoshkal Dennis, <laughs> Heisen, Silver Wolf, your videos instantly solved our problem in Unreal Engine. We love you, my dude. Wow, thank you, man. I'm glad. Wardi from Canada, good evening. Should be late a little bit. It's good to have you, Wardi. Um, wait a second. So, Mimo, hi, did you try to use UE5 preview to compile for Android standalone for Quest 2? Not yet. And I believe, guys, if you want to develop for mobile or for Quest or for virtual reality, Lumen does not support virtual reality yet. So we must, we must stick to baked lighting uh, when it comes to developing for VR. Nildo, please show us how to do proper glass in UE5 with thickness, etc. Okay, that's a good question. And as you can see here, my glass is still not proper because uh, lumen and glass are like translucency, let's say. It's the holy, other holy grail of graphics. For glass in uh, computer graphics, we always use to do it this way. So... Let's see if I can make a duplicate of this guy. Whoa, it's disappeared. First, I keep the glass shaders um, like really simple. Right now, this one is not simple. This one, actually, I'm using the glass from... Um, what do we call it? Twin motion materials. So it has a couple of nice options that we can play with. So if you change the color here. So I'm using twin motion for this, twin motion materials. If you want to achieve something similar, and it's kind of cool actually. Let's do the following. So, of course, let me copy this question so I can take a better look, do better research on how to create the ultimate glass that would work with UE5 projects, but we still need to fake it, right? However, there are two things we always do. We have like this, this glass or like uh, the translucent mesh we have on the surface. And we have also, we do uh, something for the edges. And what I mean with that, I don't have another element. Usually, so when it comes to glass in game engines or in uh, this type of projects, what well, it would be better if you have two material IDs, one for the glass itself and one for the border that would give it some thickness. So in this case, this does not look so good. And let's actually replace this instance with something that is not an instance, if that is possible. 
can we click and drag this put it here yes and let's make a duplicate of this Control d to make a duplicate this is a shortcut that changed it used to be Control w to make a duplicate now it's Control d so you can keep that in mind and so if we want to modify this we'll quick go to modeling and poly poly edit can i select all only these faces no okay let's see if we can do something real quick in marks first So the the width, let's call it like one centimeter should be fine. Two meters or one meter by eighty centimeters, and let's say like this is glass. Now before we export this to engine, always have these two faces as one material ID. So let's say this is number material ID number one. And then the edges, all these edges, as another material ID, like number two. And when we want, let me show you something too. I uh, let's see how how this will work. How this will work. So I will export this to. My folder here as data math. And let's import this. Unreal local, nope. DT temp Berlin glass test, and let's save it here. Let's click import. Wow. Um, in Max, no. Just be careful if you have exposure control. It's better to put this no exposure control. So when you import and export your assets, it won't like. Um, bring all these things here so let's just delete these keep our glass okay yeah nice very nice notice by the way when you send assets from max to unreal and it does not matter how many material elements you have on this asset or this object if you don't assign a multi sub multi material IDs, it will always come with one element only. Like, right? You remember we just saw like, hey, we have uh, two material IDs on this uh, on this object, but here it have only one. So to solve this, we need to create a multi sub object material ID, and let's set this for example to two. And we can set this to standard or whatever material you like. And then assign it. Just put any color so we can see like, hey, this have two material IDs now. Okay. And now when we export this, override it with our glass object. Let's re-import. And now it have two material IDs. Now the reason I'm saying, okay, let's uh, do, first do this and then I'm gonna show you what is coming with ray tracing, hopefully. Um, so I'm going to my maths folder. I'm gonna make a new material here. Let's just call it glass for now and let's have fun. I will open this material and I'm gonna select the blending mode the material domain no where is it i'm gonna select the blending mode to trans translucent and i'm gonna type s
this one for opacity i'm keeping keeping things extremely simple okay so this is the surface there is a translucent asset and the default shading model let's keep it on default let but i'm interested why the roughness is gone I have multiple lighting models from here so let's connect opacity here first and let's set this for example for now for poop, uh, point 0.2 i'm gonna add a vector parameter call it color and for now let's just uh, we have material um, functions for refraction and whatnot we can take look at them for in a bit but let's keep things extremely simple for now and let's set this to one this is not class it's just a very simple material at least not yet and if we assign this let's make a material instance we assign this it's now just like opacity right there is no reflections no nothing and let's make a duplicate here and let's assign it to the other side here okay now one thing we can always do is changing the color So, glass thickness. I'm faking this. When you type in Google, like, if, or just look in, look in real life for, like, when uh, for thick glass, we can always notice there's this translucent part, and then we have this part that's greenish, bluish, dark. So, I would say for now, fake this and if you're using quicksell materials just like me so i'm not gonna create material from scratch but maybe you can uh, see what's uh interesting with this one let's go to materials and let's find glass here we have the glass clear on our surface and let's open this see what is different surface translucent and next to it we have a glass border if you assign this it's like this is some some form or some type of uh, frosted glass let's say and if we select this border actually before we select the border let's just assign Actually, yeah, let's just do it this way. The moment we assign a border to our glass and like it's fake, it's um, immediately change the perception of how we see this compared to the way it was slightly earlier it's on how we have it like this right let's open this and let's see what settings we have so surface translucent volume now we have okay so when we change a mesh from uh the, the blend mode from uh, opaque to translucent this is the first time I see this getting hidden. We need also to change the lighting mode on the translucency here. And translucency here, there are many options. When you hover your mouse above any of these options, you can get like some inf more information on these. And some of them or some of these are used for particles. Some of them are like depending on can read and <laughs> see. We need surface translucency volume and keep an eye also on the instructions. So 
translucency is expensive. And let's call this roughness. Save it. So it was saying our old glass or glass instance. The problem with translucency in Lumen, now we can see some reflections, these are fake, but um, compare this to, let me show you here, Trans Unreal Engine. RTX Where is it? There was this branch of RTX Trying to find it I think it's this one. No. Stuff is kind of, once we get to it in normal um, versions or someday, look at this. with caustics and all. Like, this is incredible. This is um, a branch from NVIDIA on the RTX GI. We have these lights. So we're not here yet. Things out of the box that would work like this. Check this out. This is amazing. Someday. Until then, we keep faking things or wait for Epic to add new additions <laughs> to the engine. Now, I really recommend downloading twin motion materials and try to emulate what they do in the glass and see what nodes they are using. So if you go to the glass master again, base color, it's easy, metallic, roughness, opacity, refraction. What do we have here in refraction? Yeah, we have Fresnel, we lerp it with grass refraction. So if we add to our basic material, Renal function, not this one, but well, this one is interesting. In the utility. Just by assigning that, I'm not changing things here yet. Changing. It's now funny, but by experimenting with the... So here's what I wanted to do, Nildo. I wanted just to have open the material lab editor in Unreal and just see how simple it is experiment with it see what you can do what you cannot do but now I'm kind of very happy we, we see these uh, reflections in engine I don't think this was in the in, in a UE5 with the lumen uh, 
and just like we have here with Quixel, uh, not Quixel, Twin Motion Materials, have scalar parameters and whatnot, and see if you change the color. Keep it dark. And the roughness, so roughness is fine. We need to change, add a couple of uh, a couple of a uh, couple of uh, scalars here, just like we have here. Ha! Huh. And the exponent exponent in, and then we can lerp it. Let's uh, copy the stuff. Can do Control C, Control uh, Control V. And something I like to do is sometimes when I copy and paste stuff is to some of these parameters, I like to just see if I do following. add or make some of these scalar parameters in or some of these uh, parameters that we cannot change or like uh, constant parameters i convert them into parameters and see if i come back to the engine and open my material so this one and see what would happen if we change so now the refraction is set to one if you change it i have now interesting refraction going on this exponent in we also change it to set to six. Change the opacity. I'm really interested in seeing where lumen and reflections on translucent objects will go. But when it comes to translucency, it's always happy accidents. <laughs> Experimenting with the material until you get the look you want. At least for now. In future, when we get like this crazy integrations whether from nvidia or others then yeah it will be much easier because it's less guesswork i would say things will just work but this is extremely important we keep getting questions on translucency thank you for the question nildo and i hope this helped even if a little bit Wardi, do you use a laptop for all your work? Um, yes, I'm heavy testing this laptop that Asus sent me. Really good guys. And it is this laptop. This is the laptop I'm, I'm using. Pro Art 16. A couple of months ago, Asus sent me this guy that's still loading. Is Do I have internet? Let me check. Or is it just because the engine and some heavy stuff is going on? Let me check. Yeah, I have internet. I'm used to the internet disconnecting sometimes. This is what I'm using. And so far so good. I'm pushing this guy to its limits. Um, the other PC I have is a normal G GTX 1080 Ti, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and so on. It's uh, amazing being able to work on laptops. Hamish, good morning from Scotland, Holland. I just saw your message, Hamish. There are actually so many messages. I'm doing my best to keep up with all of you, my guys. So in case I, if I don't see a message, pardon me. You can ask your question again. Parish, how to, to put to side? Oh, we, we answered this, right? Yeah, this is the same uh, answer, I believe, my, my mom. If you go here, enable two-sided and you'll be, you would be good. But I don't recommend doing this. I just recommend having, if you have like, if you, well, it depends on the scenario, but I only, where, where is it? Where is Max? I recommend having like your meshes just like this, right? 
Now there are options or or scenarios. So, well, I don't know. Let me do this. There are scenarios. The only way. I there are ways, not scenarios. There are circumstances, let's say, where we delete these faces, and this is a good example. So can I isolate my selection? Yeah. Can I do unlet? Here, we have face from this side, and we have face from this side. And by the way, ideally, as you guys know, we should detach all of these faces for Lumen to work properly. Now, by the way, this is not good. Not good at all. But for the exterior map from here, we it's fine. For the interior projects, all these walls should be detached. Just keep that in mind. And by the way, for everyone who join us, feel free to introduce yourself. Tell us about you. So we have General Bliros from Pakistan. Welcome, welcome. Tell us about you, what you do, why you're here. And when you join us, go to pick your roles. If you like to help others, choose these, some of these roles, Unreal Helper. We're gonna change actually what we have here. I'm gonna put these Unreal Helpers on the top. I'm gonna speak to Chris about this. So join us. <laughs> Let me open the chat. I lost the chat. Where is the chat? Yeah, there we go. Question. Booty booty from Turkey. Welcome again. I'm reading some old messages. I saw a message from Wizzle. But I can't see him again. Yeah, Wizzle. Wizzle, Habibi. Bro, we should talk. I'm gonna ping you today. And we should talk whether tomorrow, today, if you're free in the weekend. It's good to see you, buddy. It's very good to see you. I have been great and I'm super excited to be here again doing these live streams, speaking to you guys. It's beautiful. It's good to see you, Wizzle. So good to see you, man. Grez, Grez Goroz, thank you so much. So we have a question. You make a house and interior plan, but the problem with, with the light, when uh, you set up the light inside, it is okay. But when you go outside, there is so much light. Everything is too bright. That's a great question, uh, Grez Goroz. Uh, so, when it comes to this, so let me see if I have a post-process volume here, and let's delete it, okay? So I think the problem is going or happening on your end. You have a house or a building. When you are outside, things could get really bright, and when you are inside, it's looking nice. Now, notice with me here, um, auto exposure is happening, and you can see, like, this is... <laughs> This is not good, not ideal, right? And I'm just like here, I'm surprised because where is the wall on this end? You see why we need sometimes two-sided? I'm just kidding. So what you need to do, Gros uh, Goros, you can have two uh, post-process volumes if you like. So what's happening here by default, the engine, like there is the eye adaptation when you go inside a dark place, our eyes take a while to adapt, to see. And when we go from extremely bright place to outside uh, is this, right? So just like in real life, the engine is trying to simulate what our eyes see when we go between dark places and bright places. And for most Archface projects or for most projects or for if you want to have more control on, on, uh, on this, here's what I would do. I would go to create, add to project, or if you're using Unreal Engine 4, so we have usually place actors somewhere. Yeah, in Unreal Engine 4, if you type here post process volume, click and add one. This is our volume. Okay. 
and through this volume we can control so almost everything we see from lens settings to some lumen settings as well when you add any post process volume we have something called exposure and there are many ways we can control exposure we can control it here from the from here you can change the metering mode you can set it to manual if you like and now it will work if we add only inside it okay if you do want this to affect your whole world you can type infinite and you may can make this affect our whole world or you can make this really big so if you have a house like this i'm gonna make this not affect our whole world i'm gonna make it only affect the building let's say right so i'm expanding this setting it here doing this and so on and by the way the way i'm switching between my uh, view modes between perspective top and so on as so i press control middle mouse button and then there is this white line if you move it to top to top you go top if you move it left or right you go back front if you move it to this corner you go right left and if you move it to the button okay so control and middle mouse button have fun with it now this is a post process volume that will affect our world or affect us our eyes if we go inside it and let's set its quality or no not its quality it's a um, setting on the exposure to something like this right and if you don't like this lens flare you can type here in the search bar lens flare intensity we can set it to zero if you like and now when we go outside it's uh, the engine is kicking off again the auto exposure we need another auto exposure setting let's say so let's just make this slightly more accurate right just like so you can make a duplicate of this and we can reduce or bring the settings the way they were and let's go to post or oh, sorry auto let's make it first infinite so it can affect the whole world and let's type auto exposure and then we can set a value that would not change so now when we go inside so by the way when we have this one affecting our whole world if you have multiple post process volumes in your world so let me first select that how oh, we have three actually so we have now two post process volumes let's call this guy exterior and let's call this y guy or first let's call it pp post process and this one pp underscore interior notice that the interior one is not working well sometimes it works sometimes no but if you don't want to take chances if you have many post process volumes you go to the post process volume settings and you can increase the priority so if you increase the priority to one it will work every time we enter this volume and if we leave it it will this one this one will kick off if we set this so i'm going inside now okay and I'm going to set the priority of the post process volume exterior to 2 or 1.5 or like anything above 1 so 1.5 it will override our post process volume so if you have that uh Grace Girls, if you have that uh scenario where you have or you want multiple post process volumes in your project like like we have now you can have one scale it to match your house and then you can set the priority of your post process volumes i hope this helps buddy as for now let's keep only 
let's keep only one for the exterior and let's keep the auto exposure on actually let's keep it off these are two different ways to control the exposure and uh, like just difference in math let's say the metering mode and you can set the mean and the max ev to whatever value you like and the exposure compensation is like where you should change values so i'm gonna press ctrl z multiple times set this back to manual another way if you don't want to add process post process volume if you want to change things inside your viewport not inside the game when we press play you can do that from here where is it if you type here on let so i'm going to delete this post process volume you can disable game setting and you can change this ev value to whatever you like however if you press play things will go back to normal so auto exposure will fix and eye adaptation one final place if you go to the project settings and here you can type also auto exposure you can find under engine rendering more options but these are the exact same as we can see in the uh, post process volume if you don't want to add a post process volume i hope this helps uh my man Gris Gorils. <laughs> Parish question. What are the most requirements for customers? Image walkthrough or VR projects? It, depending, it depends on the customer. And it depends on the services you provide. And it also depends on where you have joy. Where, where do you have fun? I would say learning Unreal Engine can help you provide all these. You can provide images, you can provide walkthroughs, you can provide cinematics, you can provide VR projects, you can provide games, you can gamify the projects. So really, who is the customer you're working with? And if you analyze like what helps them in the past or what... I think uh, VR projects for the win, if you ask me, of course. There is massive difference between seeing your project on screen like this and experimenting or experiencing the project in virtual reality on one-to-one -one scale but again it depends on the customer the deadline the timeline the budget and all these things and i would i would learn to provide all these services images cinematics walkthroughs vr projects pixel streaming blueprints so you can actually do all of these hey m design good morning buddy Say, you need two meshes, Parish, Parut. Okay, how can we put different materials on two, -sided, two sides? Because I ask one wall inside and one wall outside. Ah, okay, now I got your question. Okay, buddy. Uh, this is the same problem uh, or issue I said earlier. If you have a mesh in Max or Blender or any tool, you need to assign the material ID. So now, you remember this glass object we had here is it still here yes it is still here let's uh, have another one and let's uh, make select this object and let's give it a material id of three right now nothing technically changed because the material assigned here have only two um two sub objects two materials so we set the number here to three And we can assign a material like so. And there we go. Okay. When we export this to Unreal, this now it has three material IDs. Material ID number one, material ID number two, and material ID number three. And I think in Blender, it's the same. Like you have multiple materials assigned on different faces. And then when you export this to the engine, you should be good. Now, we have this scenario, for example, this wall, if I isolate my selection and go to unlet, 
it has what one four material IDs. Let's see why. This is an old project. We have let's go with the decals brick. We have material ID on these parts, okay, which is the exterior. It's the first element. We have material IDs on the interior part of the project. Right? So this we can see from, from here. So let's just bring this, assign it here. Right? And we have this part as well that could have another material ID. So this wall, if you go to the engine, let's say this, this is a mesh. Right now, it has one material. So if we add some subdivisions and select this face. So first, let's give it all one material ID. And then this one, let's call it number two. This one, number three. This one, number four, and so on and give it a material so don't export this to unreal engine if you are using 3ds max without without assigning a material so now if we if we assign a material you can see it has four different material ideas so i hope this answers your question uh, parish and uh, say thank you for uh, answering the question for parish you're awesome buddy All right, please make tutorials for packing ArchFace data on VR presentation application. This is coming soon. Uh, this project is the case study I'm working on. Um, actually, let me show you something. Recording stage this project. Look how many videos I recorded yesterday from scratch, well not from scratch, but from how to import export and I will follow along up to the final project and this is actually when we did it two years ago, three years ago this is a VR project so once I get there again once we pack it we will see it in VR together it's gonna be nice and to stay tuned I think just I got an email of someone signed up. Yeah. Ramol, yes. Welcome. <laughs> Go to vrdivisionacademy.com. There is some content that is not on the YouTube channel, and there will be content that would also not be available on the YouTube channel, only for our students. And yeah, just sign up. You will receive an email very soon when we start uploading some videos. There will be ways to subscribe as well. I'm not gonna say a lot on this so we can stay focused on the chat but if you want access to premium content whether paid or free go to the academy make an account sign up because yeah we cannot put everything on youtube can we <laughs> yo uh Bilo, thanks bro for the answer my pleasure buddy you had Lenovo, but it wasn't powerful to support your work. You use SketchUp and you and layout for modeling and construction drawings and escape to render images and animations. Nice. Um, buddy. Um, I look at Unreal Engine like a video game. So, Windows. <laughs> However, Mac for professional use and all. Absolutely. Victor, for your uh, gathered shadows, if you can uh, join the community, share some screenshots to the, after the stream. I have a, I have to go, by the way, guys, in 30 minutes it's because I have a meeting, but we can come back to Discord after party or something in a couple of hours and we can check things out. So I hope I will be able to help Victor once you join us. Leon. You had a lot of problems with shadows in high resolution renderings, 4K and above when using UE5 early access with Lumen. You fixed it by switching from virtual shadow maps to the old map shadow map method. 
yes uh guys just to keep in mind like what we have now in um, lumen and like unreal engine 5 by itself it's still in beta it's still in progress so like this word here is important it's here for a reason and for me for example on this project i don't know can we replicate this it just crashes so high resolution screenshot if i take a screenshot yeah finally i'm able to take screenshot usually it would crash if i go to camera i think it would crash nice it didn't crash this time like there are things sometimes you do that like so simple should not crash but crashes so i would use unreal engine 5 to experiment to have fun of course you can see some amazing work on the official facebook community for archphase but i would not use it for production yet i would always start my projects in ue4 and like do my things in ue5 uh, to learn from or to experiment But that's what differenti differentiates you from anyone who is not using UE5. You're like ahead of the curve when you're using UE5. You're experimenting with these crashes. You're like doing this sometimes. Yo, more people signing up to the community. Welcome to the academy, you guys. Nice. Leon, it's good to see you, by the way. I'm doing this project in UAE5 to push its limits to see how many times it crashes and how many, how far can we go, how big can we go. So I'm documenting the whole process. I look forward to sharing this with you. I should not save what we did here. Let's just do this. And this one is actually made for light maps for Unreal Engine 4. There are things that could be improved. I'm gonna also see how I can fix some of that. Below, you wanted to move to the next step with so you learned twin motion, became great at it, and then you decide to move to Unreal Engine, and that's why you buy M1 Max. They said it's the best computer. God damn it. I would say M1 Max is a great computer, absolutely. But I think when it comes to game engines and all, like I could I wish I could help, but someone maybe from the community, if you guys have M1 Max or Mac, you can help each other. Um, also, you could try disabling Nanite on the objects, casting bad shadows. That's right, for bad shadows on gathered shadows. Nice, Victor. I look forward to seeing you in the community. Yo, Sinan. Good morning, buddy. Hope you're doing good. Hi, Dubai, brother. 3D graphics designer. Welcome, Habibi. Adam, is Twin Motion now also in Unreal Engine 5 version? No, I believe Twin Motion is set on Unreal Engine 4. However, I would not be surprised when Unreal Engine 5 is like released. Um, that we're going to get Lumen on Twin Motion as well. So exciting times. And I want to import the same project in Twin Motion to see. I want to experiment with adding the cars, the people, the trees, and then experiment see how the bridge between twin motion and unreal will help twin motion is dope 3d graphics i love your tutorials and work my pleasure man we're always here to help you're working with ue4 27 but you love ue5 it almost has everything but the flickering and the emission lights always make you crazy it make me crazy too buddy but uh that's why we keep learning, keep experimenting. <laughs> Abdul Mo'men. Habibi, welcome. You tried UE5, but for some reason it keeps crashing. And how much can you give it on stability? I would give it 6, 7 of 10, depending on who is, like, on what are we using the engine for. Um, the engine officially, as far as I know, like the first production ready stable version it's coming towards the end of the year that is like about seven eight six month 
from now. So I can only imagine how much work it will uh, it will be added on it. And we got the preview version, the preview update a couple of days ago. I think two days ago. Let me check. And between preview one and preview two, look how much they fixed. So all these bug errors and bugs and all like that's massive and this is just maybe a week or something right <laughs> yeah disable vr plugins by default i think that was also causing crashes crashes can happen for so many reasons so imagine how much work there is still this is why unreal engine 5 is such a big deal guys if it's crashing a lot it means there is just so much new to it if we type lumen here there were also some things on lumen so ray tracing scenes has missing meshes visible and lumen reflections look how much lumen stuff there is nanite and all so preview 3 preview 4 we're getting a couple of previews and the stability is just going to improve from here and if you have any bug reports any crashes that you can replicate you should always visit the forums and talk about them so they get fixed Look at that. Yo, I'm in Jar Marta. Good morning, Habibi. Good morning. Below, you're doing residential projects in SketchUp and then you export them to Twin Motion to change textures, colors, but you're it used to crash. Wallahi. <laughs> oh bro, I feel the pain. The Lenovo is best than the Mac. Sorry for sharing my... No, no. Feel free to share your pains. Don't be sorry. You, all of you guys, always share your pains. That's the only way we can uh, help, each other, help each other solve these pains and grow as a community. And I want you to share your pains. Again, I know I said this a million times. But come here. Come here and share your pains. And when you come here, assign uh, a role. So when someone shares their pain, we can help each other. So how do you use material ID in Unreal Engine? Here you have a mesh with one material ID. This is Ajax. Edward. Edward, are you watching? You want to be one on the ceiling, one material ID, and one on the carpet material with detaching the whole thing. So I think I'm going to start with Edward here. Is this one mesh only? So. If you have the same problem, if you have, like, if you want one, I'm going to repeat this again for Edward. I'm going to send you this timestamp. And yeah, guys, below, share your pains. That's the only way we can improve. So when you have something like this, you want multiple material IDs. I'm going to repeat this. If you are using Max, and if you have this mesh, so let's say we have a mesh. Let's do two copies of it. I don't know why this happens. It used to drive me crazy until I figured out why. So this is a mesh with two material IDs, three material IDs, right? And this is a mesh, the same exact mesh now. I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to assign a material on it. So. This one has no material. It has a default shading that comes from uh, 3ds Max, like any color we have. And this one got material on it. Okay. I'm going to export this box test. And I'm going back to Unreal. And I'm going to import this. So let's call it, where is it? It's called box test. Click OK. Click import. <laughs> and now we have uh, these two meshes, right? So this one, if we click on it, even though we just assigned three material IDs on it, but we didn't assign a material, it has only one material ID. However, this mesh, it has three material IDs. So when you want to export from 3ds Max to Unreal, and you want to have multiple material IDs, don't forget to assign a material with multiple material IDs, okay? So the way you assign a material, so if you have like one material assigned, let's actually try this. Let's assign only one material here and let's export it to the engine. 
and let's click import re-import please don't crash it's asking me to save some change don't save just import bro yeah sorry it has only one material id now because it's one material assigned on the whole object now to avoid this you go to max if you're using max and i think by in blender we don't even need to do this we can check oh, sorry we need to select something called so when we in max when we press m to create new material to open the material editor you press on any of these materials and you need to change it from standard or whatever to multi sub object just like this okay and we can keep or discard the old material it doesn't really matter we have now 10 material ids on this one let's set this number to three four five it's up to you but try not to have so many material ids on your uh, object because each material id will cause like one draw call and when you have many 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 objects this will reduce the performance so there is no right and wrong number but try not to have like really a lot because if you have an object with four material ids and then you have 10,000 or a thousand objects of that object then that's like what a lot of draw calls so let's say three I usually like three four depends really if you assign so if you assign this here it's now black right except for the first one where we assigned uh, any material so if you make a copy change the color make a copy Keep the color or change it, it's up to you. I'm just changing the color so we can see what's uh, what's going on. And now if we export this again to the box test that the file we just exported to. And if we press control space, find the data map actor, click, right click, re-import. Notice we have now three material IDs, meaning we can assign one material ID here, one material ID here. Uh, no material ID here. This object though, because it does not have a material, I'm repeating myself. If you assign a mesh or a material, it gets assigned everywhere. Now let's do this. Let's assign the same material or any other material on this so it's have like different uh, multiple material IDs. And let's export again. And let's come back here and let's re import again. You will notice now it has three material IDs. So if you don't share your pains, we will never be able to answer your pains. Come back to this pain in a moment. <laughs> All right, Luca, good morning. Can you show us how to make smooth shadows with the sun angle source of 50 or more? Because when I do that, my shadows edges become very noisy. All right, that's a good question, and they should be noisy. Um, let's see. We can give it a shot. I remember from the documentation in... Uh, I have only 20 minutes, and then I have to go because I have a meeting I have to prepare to, but we can try. So let's say... I wonder what you're making, Luca. Oh, not uh, the intensity. What type of planet are you making? Wow, look at the sun, it's so big. So as for the noise, I love soft shadows. That's so hot. So as for the noise, Let's switch to detailed lighting, maybe you can see, yeah. So let's go Unreal or Lumen, Unreal Engine 5, Documentation. If you open the documentation, whether this is for the virtual shadow maps as well. 
So let's see where are the virtual shadow maps. So it's basically, it has to do with, there are some always some, wow, it's snowing, some console commands. Let's see. I remember, ah, Lumen Technical Details, Surface Cache, Screen Tracing, Software Ray Tracing, Virtual Shadow. As for the noise, I think Rifty is way too much. But I remember in the documentation somewhere we had something that has to do with the noise. Um, a console command. I can't see the page anymore. I heard from one of the guys in the community, Yusuf. He said there were some console commands that were that they got removed. So, could it be that? So, let's add a post process volume. Let's make it add infinite. And let's make at, let's go to the global illumination. Yes, lumen, global illumination. So some of these settings are new. We used to have one setting or two, but now we have more. And so the quality, if we set it to five, it's going to be kind of hard to see. Give it one. Let's uh, make it lowest quality possible. Ha. Starting with the max trace distance, if you have a massive project. Now this is fun. Final gather quality. We have more advanced lumen lighting update speed, final gather lighting update speed. Nice. Uh, Luca, I will uh, take a note of your question. I will, uh, I need to see what are the console commands because I can't remember all console commands and see if there were any console commands that has to do with the quality of the virtual shadow maps because I tried some they didn't work during the stream so r dot virtual I can't find these console commands I can't remember them to be honest Mm -mm. Where are should make a wiki page of all the console commands community built. That would be dope. I'm looking on the other side here if there are any console commands we can check, but there are pages that doesn't doesn't exist anymore yep i'm sure there was a page that is removed mm.
Luca, I wish I could help, but um, I took a note of your question. And perhaps in another stream, I'm gonna see or a video. And Luca, if you can also come to the community, share a screenshot of the noise that uh, you're struggling with. Perhaps someone will be able, or like us as the community, will be able to help debug this. All right, buddy? So there is always links in all YouTube videos to the, to the community. Join us. My man. Suhaib. Suhaib Aba Abadila. Abdelia. My man, Habibi, Kifak. <laughs> Good morning. So when are you expecting the final version of UE5 to be released and be production ready? According to what I know, and it's uh it should be towards the end of the year. So I would say I don't know exactly, but I would say around October, November. Um, seven, eight months from now. All right. Teton. About the Jagged Shadows question with the Sun Direction Light, the bias thing resolved it. Okay. Yes. Ah, ah, okay. Yes, 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 yes. So, there is this console command. This one. R.shadow.virtual. Let me show you again. Now I understood. Thank you so much, man. Titon. You are a legend. So for anyone who are having like these shadows, the gad the gadget, I don't even know how to pronounce this. I also if we can someone help us about the noise as well, guys, that would be dope. For the they are, I covered the gad, gadget shadows and some other issues in this video. I'm going to also post. If you go to show more, there are virtual shadow maps, le level of detail for the virtual shadow maps. And if you're using for directional light, just like uh, Teton said here, or as you can see here, we have directional. And if you're using normal lights, then there is another, it's called local. So when you type the following, so for some reason it didn't work. Let's try again. Let's select this and let's reduce this back to... R dot shadow dot virtual dot there are all these settings that uh, I would recommend also playing with see what they can do this is actually a fun exercise samples buried directional texel density okay so this one I'm gonna copy it and I remember if we add this thingy like question mark help for r dot the setting our setting now is set to minus one so let's set this to first let's see if we can set it to two so we can like get that yeah i think we can see it no So minus two is the lowest setting I believe we can go to, but I don't know why it's not changing anything on my end. It's always the same. Let's set it to three, which is like the worst quality we can get. Ha! Huh. I think, I don't know if you guys can see it. Nope. It's not working on my end, I don't know why. But yes, this is the setting. R dot shadow dot virtual dot resolution LOD bias if you're using this for directional light type directional if you're using this for local lights point light rectangular light and other types of lights should use local and on any console command so r dot virtual on any console command 
if you type let's say max tray angle form i think this one has to do with the with the noise let's type question mark and go to the output log larger numbers larger angles lead to more noise So let's take this and if we set this like to one, do we get any noise or is just the engine on my end? I need to experiment with this off stream, but now I change that setting. Let's type this. Now it's set to two. It's changing something, but I don't. Well, this is my bad because I don't know exactly what I'm changing, but. If you add this question mark on any console command, you can get more information on it. So this is one way to understand what they do, what they don't do. And what is the value you have? I'm going to try it off stream. Titon Habibi, thank you. Titon AI Art. Raymond, good morning. Long time no see. It's good to see you. Amil Jar, you left me a message on Discord. Amil Jar, can you ping? Uh, like just type a dot or anything on discord um my inbox always flooded so if you can leave me a message so it can go up i would see it and this is actually for anyone who is always dm me if you dm me on discord and if i don't respond my bad but i keep getting messages all the time so if i don't respond just leave a dot or say like question mark or anything so you can bring it up every day i literally reply to tens of messages and emails and more methods even more including everything we're doing anas zorba habibi this is kind of how it looks on my rtx 3090 i think even in early access too i'm jelly man you have 3090 <laughs> but yes oh lucas yo good morning Come back to Istanbul, man. We have a lot to talk about. And so much kebab to eat. It's good to see you, Lucas. Guys, I love doing these live streams because I get to see all of you, get to chat. I need to just be more... Oh my god, there is Xavier. Wizard again. Good to see you, guys. <laughs> it's the Fresnel Anas. Okay. We, Anas, are we talking about the translucency, right? Okay, Raymond, question about the walls that and detaching each face needs to be detached? Mostly yes, and if we look quickly at the documentation, so Unreal Engine, Lumen, there are like these cards that Lumen will need to generate in order to, to for the global illumination to work correctly. Let me find that quickly I think it has to do with the surface cache if they only add screenshots but it's about the surface caching that's why we still need to detach faces so if you go to lumen technical details and read a little bit here um, the surface caching is why we need to detach the meshes and it would not work on like convex shaped meshes and whatnot I, let's see if we can uh, visualize that yeah okay so i will uh, do my best to demonstrate we have like five to ten minutes by the way let me check my calendar yeah we have 10 minutes each mesh we have and we import there will be like a bounding box around it and it will like i don't know how to demonstrate it it's too technical for me but this box is like projecting, I don't know, 
I'm trying. If you have a mesh that looks like this, wow, that's way too complex. Uh, can I select? Let's set this back to zero. So if you have a mesh like this, like these boxes now does not make any sense right so to make the work easier on the engine on how these bounding like this surface caches so lumen generates if we want to read it lumen generates an automatic parameterization of the nearby scene surfaces called surface cache it is used to quickly look up lighting and ray hit points in the scene, Lumen captures the material properties for each mesh from multiple angles. These capture positions called cards. This is very important. Like, um, the, I don't know if you can visualize the cards. Are generated offline for each mesh. These can be visualized with R Lumen card placement. So these are the cards. But there were also like something for the GI and how we move. Nanite accelerates the mesh captures used to keep the surface cache in sync with triangle scene. High poly meshes in particular need to be using nanite to have efficient captures. Interesting. After the surface cache is populated with material properties, Lumen calculates direct and indirect layering for these surface positions. These updates are amortized over multiple frames, providing efficient support for many dynamic lights and multi-bounce global illumination. When we have meshes that are not detached well, or like when we make it really hard for these cards to show, we would not have multiple uh, bounces for our global illumination, if you want to put it that way. So global illumination would not look right in the scene. So let's click zero here. There is almost no light bounce. If we go like quickly here, it's extremely dark. If we detach these meshes, um, we will have really much better lighting. Let's put it that way. Or Lumen would work probably, leading to much better lighting. So that's why we still need to detach our meshes. I would, I am very interested in taking screenshots once I start detaching some of these meshes. Um, how it will affect the light bounces and whatnot. See if we can make a case study of this. Let's see questions before we leave. Not much left. But Raymond, very good question, buddy. Well, Habibi, I will uh, ping you on Discord so we can schedule chat and we do the streams we talk about. And guys, should also do it with Xavier. <laughs> there are some amazing people from the community, veterans like Weasel, Xavier. I will have, we will have more people on stream soon. So I want to collaborate with more artists. So if anyone, so I'm gonna do this now with, uh, I spoke with Weasel with, uh, about this a couple of months ago. If anyone wants, and let me also show you something. some um, feedback on your architectural projects and architectural scenes from your boy Wizzle, from and from me and from Harun. See, even Harun is like his meow. I want to do that too. What? Okay. He wants just to sit like this. Fat boy. Um, join us on Discord if you're not already. Uh, you can either share your uh, work in progress or your work put it so we can in the upcoming stream i'm gonna make an announcement on youtube soon see when we can do this or we where we can even submit the work for review but we would love to review your portfolios see how can you improve your uh, light bakes your projects your, there is a lot and with your boy xavier i will work challenges on world building environment design so i'm very excited very excited. How to make a smooth transition between post-process volumes? That's a good question. 
let me copy this question Raymond because I have to close and we will see how we can make it a smooth transition it's uh, I think having multiples and the priority is what matters the engine by default will do its best to do the smooth transitions I copied this and let's see how we can make harsh and smooth transitions Peter, how do you do a still image? I see the sequence thingy, but how do you make it a nice high resolution image? Uh, good question, uh, Peter. If you want to take high quality resolution images in the engine, we go to this nice little burger menu, and we here have an option called high resolution screenshot. And this number, the higher it is, the higher. <coughs> Sorry. the higher resolution uh, screenshot you will get but be careful like don't go it, it like this is literally screen size uh, shot multiplier so if you go like to five we will get a warning but then we'll get five times the scale of this image so that's like i don't know five ten thousand by ten thousand so you can take extremely high resolution screenshots if your gpu can afford it but also be careful on how high you go with the settings Harun he needs attention now like bro <laughs> Raymond look up for movie render queue to take some high resolution screenshots at the best quality yes the movie render queue as well in cinematics you can find the movie render queue I think we should cover that in upcoming um, streams but there is also a lot you can do from here and I think it's safer to do stuff from here especially for videos as well Mahatma, you can't get even a UA5 installed why is that buddy? to get Unreal Engine 5 installed you can go to this nice little plus find the engine and download it easy peasy <laughs> Twin Motion is better than Unreal Engine <laughs> jokes depending on what you're trying to do if you want to get visualizations extremely fast yes twin motion jokes i'm just kidding but that's true parish thanks for the help it's my pleasure man the community is amazing okay i will wrap up on some of these messages any questions i'm gonna copy now for later harun Uh, I have owning rendering company with expertise in Corona render, but now we want to enhance your artifice via Unreal 2. Khitij, is that how I pronounce it? First, welcome to the stream. I think this is the first time you join us. It's good to see you. It's good to have you. And Unreal Engine is the way to go. One thing to know about Corona render, I don't think the new physical materials are supported yet with data math. So just keep that in mind. And I really look forward to see what you will create, guys. And again, I look forward to seeing your work on our community. Join us. I left the link in the chat. Say hello. Introduce yourself, all of you, my guys. Tell us what you're doing. Um, whether you're a freelancer, if you own a company, if you are like, just join us. We are like people from all walks of life in um, in the community. And the ultimate goal is to help each other learn the engine, find jobs, improve our business, improve our pipelines, all that good stuff. Ah, uh, by the way, <laughs> Twin Ocean is built on Unreal Engine, yes. <laughs> Raymond. Yes. Peter, good luck with the movie render queue and with the high resolution screenshots. Did I hear bad shadows in Unreal Engine 5? You can fix nanite wrong meshes with R ray tracing normal bias. Yes, Xavier, you told me about this a couple of days ago. And we need to try this. Let's have a call today. But for anyone who is having bad shadows in your E5, you make your nanite meshes. That's right, Xavier, correct? This is the way. 
the normal bias. Yeah, I told you also I had that problem a couple of days ago, but I still didn't try this. Let me copy this. I want to try it. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Gary, hey King. <laughs> Your passivity always make my day. Thank you, man. Gary, you are a king, buddy. Cheers. Yo, Sinan, let's talk about taking render shot and video. Let me copy this to the requests, Sinan. And I promise you guys, we're gonna make tutorials on how we can render high resolution screenshots and high resolution videos with the best qualities possible. All right? Prinash, it's good to have you, buddy. Hey, hey. Rapid Fox, hey, bro. Hey, Bruski, did you get update preview version that came recently? Yes. And if so, what are the changes? That is a good question. So the changes are lots and lots and lots of improvements. Thanks to, to Feeding Wolves for sharing this with me. Because I also didn't know the changes. So these are the changes are fixes, let's say. And what the guys at Epic fixed, look at how many things they fixed. So I imagine in preview three, preview four, and so on, how many fixes we're going to get. So this is what changed, um, brother, rapid. Lots of changes. Wow. Yo, Vladimir, Vladimir, Vladimir. Hey, buddy. It's good to see you. Long time no see, Vladimir. Bashar, Habibi, hello. Amal, no, buddy, this is a Berlin uh, project. Also, it's good to see you, Amal. For Frankfurt project, I also want to redo it in Unreal Engine 5. There are assets we worked on. We can improve them, have them, Amal. <laughs> Raymond, you are switching to UE5, so you will be around from now. Amazing, it's good to have you, Raymond. I'm still using both versions, UE4 and UE5. And there will be streams only on UE4 where we can learn how to bake our lights. Like, you know, there is the happy medium. Eric, good morning from Brazil. Welcome, Eric. And good morning to you too. Did you have your coffee, Eric? Coffee is good. Amal. Hi, yeah, yeah, yes. I recent project you did in UE5 making large meshes linked attached to smaller pieces improve the lighting greatly and you almost feel like the mesh should not be like convex meshes and like collisions that is absolutely right so for anyone who wants to improve their lighting so now look here once i de start detaching these meshes so they are not convex meshes and by convex i mean like some complex shapes like this when we have like this part with this wall alone and this wall alone, and this wall alone, and this wall alone, and so on, lighting will improve greatly. And by the way, Amal, congrats on your latest work. I saw it on Substance page. Can we see it? Substance. Can we see it? I'm trying to find it. I can't see it. Ah, there we go. Yo, good work. Very good work. I'm proud of you, buddy. I'm really glad to see where you went with this. Nice, nice. Let's read the chat because I need to close soon. Have you tried D5 render since then, my friend? Gary, believe it or not, not yet, but let's add this to the list. I want to try it. <laughs> Habibi, Vladimir, you will return to YouTube in English after this war. I hope it ends, man. As a Syrian, it makes me so sad to see more wars. And I really hope to see you soon, uh, Vladimir. Stay safe, buddy. All of you. 
Tottenham, hello cute cat. Harun, you're famous now, they're saying you're a cute cat. I doubt you're cute though. <laughs> Too busy to watch. Galib. Hey, yeah, yeah. I asked before about purge function in UE5. We need to clean the main level from the actors we don't use in production. Purge function, purging file to make it the executable file smaller. I think now I understood what you meant. Galif, okay, there was a plugin. So Unreal Engine Clean Assets. What you need to find, there are plugins. Some of them are free, some of them are paid, and there are also some Python scripts that you can learn. If you search Google Asset Cleaner or Cleaning Assets or Purging Assets or Delete Unused Assets, you will find a couple of plugins that could help. Now, asset clean, let's see. There is one I use from time to time. So let's also set free if you don't. Yeah, save delete. I actually use this and it's very nice. So Galif, Galiaf, I hope this helps you, buddy. You can start with this and you can look for more. So here's project cleaner. I never tried this one, but it does the same. Um, the same uh, functionality, it will delete unused assets in the engine. So there we go. Mahatma. Yeah, really, we need them thoughts on high resolution rendering. I can even get good quality on the marketplace projects. Let's go. I added this to the requests list and we will get them thoughts. Okay, guys, I went through all the chat. Did my best to answer all of you from start to finish. It's good to have all of you today. I'm very glad we did this. I will see you very soon. I must close. I have less than 20 minutes to prepare for a meeting I have soon. Now, I will uh, schedule the next live soon once I do some research on some of these questions. And thank you. Thanks to all of you. Have a wonderful rest of the day or evening, depending on where you are. If you found this stuff useful, don't forget to leave a like, it costs you nothing, subscribe as well. It helps us a lot reaching more people, reaching more amazing people like you. And if you don't like it, leave a like, dislike, sorry, and tell me why, <laughs> so we can improve. Take care and stay hydrated. Bye bye.